Good. Good. Unique New York. Unique New York. Uh, the arsonist had oddly shaped. <laughs> 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 Hello there, friends, and welcome back to another episode of Football Manager Therapy. I am your host, Rich Owens, and before we continue, does anybody have any problems with the seating arrangements, or are you all happy now? Yeah, good. Pretty good. Okay. We've, we've had shrugs and thumbs up, which work brilliantly on a predominantly audio podcast. Hi, everybody. The whole FM team is here. Kev is here. Oh Jeb's here. Callum's here. I'm here. Together we're back. It's been it's been two weeks. Oof. It's been two weeks since we last recorded a podcast, just because of life and and everything else that's been going on around it. So it's lovely to be back. Uh, Kev, how are Rich. you? I'm good. I'm really happy to be here. What a fantastic thing! All four of us on the same podcast at the same time. Lovely stuff. Yeah, really happy to be back. It's been weird over the last couple of weeks not being able to put an episode out. Haven't enjoyed that much at all. But yeah. Off we go again. Do we actually remember how to do this? No, no, absolutely not. Absolutely not. I think we're just going to talk and after about an hour or so, I'll say that feels like a podcast. We'll all agree and then we'll all just call it there. So. But that is how we always do this. <laughs> That's the format. That's the format. <laughs> Tried and tested. It's, it works It works brilliantly. It works brilliantly. Kev, it's a pleasure and I'm looking forward to spending my time with you. Hi, Jeb. How are you, buddy? Yeah. If you're rich, why I'm talking like this. But, I mean, what's yeah, good. What's going on? I don't know. <laughs> the also, I don't know if you we'll, we'll probably go into it later. I don't know if wrote to Legends. No, I did my wave bit at the end. Mm -hmm. I had to wave for two minutes because they, they didn't transfer me off. In long enough. <laughs> <laughs> Just like... <laughs> well, I mean, you, yeah. you are well rehearsed at it, so it's you know, it's yeah, just a bit too long. So I'm going to start with like ten minutes. When I get bored, I'm just going to start waving. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but if you see Jeb in the next uh, couple of weeks, he's got one massive arm. That's for why. Mm. Um, that's, that's, why. that's why. That's why. That's, 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 that's why. That is why. Yeah. That's move why. on. Move on. <laughs> that's and that's why. Callum, hi, Callum. <laughs> good one. You're no, back. That was good. I am back. Thank you. I am back. Um, yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while. Mm. Who knew? Who knew having a child would interrupt so much? <laughs> it's ridiculous, isn't it? But no, it is a pleasure. It's it's always strange not being on and it coming round. And every week it's sort of being announced as oh, it's three quarters of the of the FM team are here. And I always know it's always me who's not here. And it, I think probably it's become an, an air of inevitability that each week now it's almost like I'm not on the podcast. I, they were all on a on, on a. Um, panel and all sorts this week to do with Road to Legends. I wasn't even invited because I'm not involved in FMT anymore. Couldn't believe it. It's the FMT RTL. It's a lot of abbreviations. <laughs> and I wasn't even there. You know, that's that's how out of the loop I am. But no, it's a pleasure to be back and popping into each of your various chats. I hugged Jeb last weekend. Literally, Oof. we hugged. So, wow. you know, it is all happening. That, that was a physical event. That was while I was streaming because that would have been really weird. That, right, right. It would have, really but then, weird. But then I could have just come around. And, uh, anyway, that's a different kind of stream, isn't it? And um, yeah, no, but I'm great. I'm great. Thanks, Rich. How are you? Yeah, I'm well. I'm well. Actually, I'm I'm now just really invested in the idea of you hugging Jeb midstream, like crawling out of his I'll, laptop I'll screen behind him, like the girl from the ring, <laughs> and then just giving him a little cuddle, and then just backing like all the way back in. Oh, that'd be lovely. That'd be lovely. <laughs> it could probably be arranged. Right. Jeb's very good I at think... special effects and stuff. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think we can make it happen. Just I think everybody that's happen. watching the YouTube version of this, make sure you're watching Jeb's little monitor behind him all the time because you never know what might crawl out of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a cat there that might, who knows? Yep. It's a real cat. He's just in there. I don't know how he's got <laughs> in there. He's stuck. He's just stuck. He can't get out. He shouldn't, have he shouldn't have raised that. Yeah, I know. That's all, that's all Jeb's going to be. Jeb's just not going to talk for the next 15 minutes now. He's going to find an image of me walking or something like a monster. Yeah. I'll send yep, you one. That's it. <laughs> yeah. I, I can I, I can now just envision Jed's Google searches. Just laptop haunted question mark. Uh, no, it's just Kev. It's, got... it's just rich. <laughs> when he to shave his head. 
Oh, oh good. Oh dear. Good. If you are not watching the YouTube version, we're so sorry, but you should be for goodness sake. Just don't. Just just don't. I'm, I'm being oh. I'm being bullied. I'm being hideously bullied. I'm an absolute good. mess, and we've only been going for like three minutes. It's ridiculous. <laughs> for goodness sake. Oh, should we try and get it back on the rails? I think it's probably the, the thing to do, isn't it? it uh, now, in terms of what we're going to do today, fellas, I feel like because we've had a couple of weeks off, we haven't been around for the last couple of weeks, that means that there would have been time to, you know, meticulously plan out an episode, come up with something exciting and new as, as a, you know, as a celebration of us being back. Okay. And that's not, that's not what I've done. Oh. Uh, sorry, everybody. Sorry. Um, because if there's one thing that I enjoy, it's repetition. Uh, repetition is great right. and it makes me feel safe and it makes me feel comfortable. And that's enough. That's just a different thing altogether, isn't it? But I like a bit of repetition. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring back one of my favorite FMTs. Uh, and we're going to play a game today. The four of us, we're going to play a little game together. And then the winner of our game is going to be decided by you, the audience. Uh, we are going to play Ledley Kings League 2 Electric Boogaloo. Hooray. It's just, it's fun to do, fun to say. Rich, I'm quite pleased about that. For a minute, with the repetition, I thought we were all going to have to recount what our FM23 saves were. Uh, I... <laughs> slow! I did slow! <laughs> <laughs> Easy. I feel like it was... I know, I, you're misremembering. I feel like I did slow. I feel like you're misremembering, Callum. In, in, in a lot of ways, we all did slow. I we think. all definitely you know, did. You know. mm -hmm. Yeah, in a, yeah the, in a lot of ways, we, we all experienced slow mm -hmm. together. Physically, emotionally, mostly physically. In mostly. Case, we were literally the time yeah. had by all. Um, so if you are unfamiliar with the format uh, of Ledley Kings League uh, and what we did last time around, inspired by Gerard Piquet's Kings League in that there Spain, uh, we took it in turns to draft our perfect Spanish six-a-side football teams. The rules were you had to have three current footballers who have at some point played in Spain during their career. You could choose two retired footballers who at some point had play, played in Spain during their career. And then you got to pick a wild card, which could be literally anybody or anything to do whatever you want on the football pitch for you. That's what we did. We had a lovely time doing it. I had Danny DeVito in goal. That's all I can remember. Uh, and I feel like that's all we need to remember. It was great. We had great fun. Uh, we're going to do it again, but we're putting a couple of caveats. We're changing a few things. We're changing a few things, fellas. So the first change this time is that we're not doing Spain again. Spain has been done. Uh, I'm, I'm bored of it. I'm finished with it. It, it can go away. Um, is that in general terms? Just in general. Okay. Spain. Right, right. Oh, right. So fix up. No, awkward. You're awkward. Country, uh, okay. And I love tapas. Um, <laughs> no, what we do, it's brilliant. Oh, sharing just loads of little plates of food. Instead of one big plate of food, what a, what a treat for everybody involved. Um, sure. Just pick a meal and stick to it. Paella is nice, though. I like paella. That's that's nice. Anything else, Rich, that you like from Spain? <laughs> sun? No. Do you like the sun? But, oh, good I could do without the sun. Head, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid, yeah, when I shave my head like I have in the background, I burn, I burn to a crisp. <laughs> uh, no, basically just paella, as it turns out. And Carlos Poyle. I like Carlos Poyle as well. Mm, um, okay. That's three things. Anyway, uh, that, that ends the travel feature of this week's episode. <laughs> uh, Italy, we're doing Serie A Yay! this time around. Hooray, Serie A, because Serie A is fun. Uh, so we're going to do Serie A. Uh, the only other caveat this time is that uh, we're not allowed to duplicate players. Ooh. So we're going to take it in turns to, to pick a player each. And so so you, can't have, you can't have six Danny DeVitos then? Can't have six DeVitos. Can't have six DeVitos. Okay. Shot yourself in the foot there. Yep. If and when I pick Danny DeVito, none of you can pick Danny DeVito. So Unless I get there first. <laughs> yeah, hopefully Kev gets in there early doors. Um, so we're going to take it in turns. You can go any order of positions you like. Uh, you can play any formation you like. And then once we've all picked our six aside teams, uh, we're going to put some polls out on Twitter, uh, on um, Spotify. You can vote and tell us who you, who you think has picked the best six aside team made up of past and present Serie A players sound awesome. good it sounds like something sounds like something doesn't it now we, i was i was worrying about how to pick who got to pick first mm -hmm. because obviously whoever goes first has a bit of an advantage and then callum called dibs i sure so, did i yeah. sure did and that's how it works so in life that's that's, you know. that's how it works mm -hmm. yeah 
that them's the rules, unfortunately. So I suppose on that basis, Cullen, we'll, we'll let you pick first, mate. So who's going to be the first player in your past and present Serie A six aside team? Well, I feel in a six aside team, I enjoy playing six aside, actually. It's, it's arguably better than 11 aside in a lot of ways. You need a linchpin who's going to be your playmaker. The one who you can give the ball to all day long and he's just going to pick passes. And there's only one player that comes to mind, surely, when you talk about Italy. He's a beautiful man. He's now a manager, so he is not one of my current players. And his name is Andrea Perlo. Oof. And Perlo will be my first selection in there. And I was very worried because I had no alternative to Perlo. <laughs> <laughs> Without him, I have no team. So he is basically my entire midfield in my formation. But yeah, he's my first choice, Andrea Perlo. It was inevitable, really, wasn't it, that Perla was going to pop up quite early on into this. Uh, and uh, first pick, it makes complete sense. He's gorgeous. Uh, he's really, really good at passing. And uh, the day of World Cup finals, he sat around playing Pro Evo in the morning, according to his autobiography. So what a man. What a man. It's a solid first pick. It's a very, very solid first pick. And uh, I'm slightly annoyed that he, you've taken him because I think <laughs> we were all probably going to try and fit him in in some capacity. Oh, oh, here we go. Sure. Oh, well, oh I don't want well. Perlo. Pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> don't need him. It's He's such back. a small space. Who, who can't pass the ball when you're a professional footballer? Doesn't matter. I've seen plenty of them, Kev. <laughs> I've seen plenty of them <laughs> in my time. I, I won't them. say anything <laughs> to that. Uh, hey, hello, my Road to Legends midfield from, uh, from this week. <laughs> anyway, anyway uh, Jeb, who would you like? as your first choice of footballer, past or present from Serie A? I'm going to the past. Are oh. you familiar with uh, Badon d'Oro? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Def, definitely. But for people who aren't, Jeb, yeah, yeah. obviously Let we them know, are. Jeb. So if you could explain it's, a little bit it's further. It's the golden bin. It's the golden bin. It's for the worst player in Serie A. And I think this is harshly done. Because this is the best player on the aforementioned Pro Evo 5. It's Adriano. He won it three times. Just wow. How wow. unimpressive he was in real life compared to what it was on Pro Evo. He won it twice with Inter and once with Roma. Had a bit of a temper on him as well, which will be an ongoing theme. I mean, that's, that's how we're going to go. I'm going for the five-a-side team that's basically another one that you never want to play. Or six. Yeah, mm -hmm. another six, but you know. <laughs> It doesn't work. I don't understand. I've it's never played six aside. It's great. Right. It's so much better than five. It's, yeah, it's exactly. bigger pitch. Yeah, is it? It's one, it's one sure? less good than seven. Is it? Oh, okay. Yeah. Good math. I like it. I like eight aside. Right. Uh, anyway. Not yeah. Good. So Adriano. Yeah, he could hit a shot. He was like the pretender to uh, real Ronaldo, and then later Ronaldinho and various other, other strikers that they had. He j just never really broke through into that squad. But the Pro Evo was amazing. So I'm going to go based off that. And then his temper was sometimes phenomenal as well. He got sent off a fair few times. And to win something like the Golden Bin, and people to keep signing him as well, the fact that Roma signed him and he played, I think he played five lackluster games for them, did nothing surprisingly. He's he's my pick because great player. I rate it very highly. I rate it very, very highly. Um, it seems to be like a really weird like Serie A career tradition, doesn't it? Like you play for one of the bigger teams and then your career starts to decline and then another big Italian club will just pick you up and you'll play four games for them. And then you just leave under a cloud. Like it happened to real Ronaldo or AC Milan. They just picked him up. Uh, he was like, yeah, he's passed his best. His knees have gone. He's put on about four stone. Like, ah, we'll sign him and we'll pay him under grand a week and he'll play about six games for us. And then that'll be that. That's how I want to end my career. Uh, ideally at AC Milan. That would be if, if they are watching. <laughs> Hello, AC Milan. I'm available, just so you know. Love Italy. Love Italy. Uh, Kev, who's your yes. first? Oh. So we seem to be going legends. So I'm going to continue the trend and go with one of my two uh, legends of the game. There is one particular player that in my younger days, if I could have chosen anybody from anywhere and mm -hmm. bought in preferably to Manchester United, but overall the Premier League or the top English league, it would have been this guy. I am absolute. I'm an absolute stan for Paolo Maldini. Darn it! Love oh, the guy. No. I absolutely <laughs> love this guy. He had everything. He could play central defence, left fullback. He had height and size. He had a decent touch on the ball. He was a threat in both boxes here and there. 
just generally really fantastic defender. And the fact that he could cover a couple of different roles was key. But yeah, I have always been an absolute stand for Paolo Maldini, one of my favourite ever players. And I'm so disappointed that we never got to see him play in English football because I still think he would have been incredible. But for what he did in Serie A, top of the pile for me. I want Maldini, please. Uh, you can begrudgingly have him, Kev. Thank um, you. <laughs> I I thought you were going to go for somebody else as your ah. first pick. And then I was sat here thinking, smug, thinking, I get Paolo Maldini. <laughs> <laughs> and, and now you've started. But he is. Is Paolo Maldini the greatest defender of all time? And I, if he I isn't, say who is? Up there. Jimmy I mean, Trey. there's there's a few, aren't there? <laughs> who yes. did you say? Jimmy Traore. Champions oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jimmy naturally. Traore. I mean, that goes, you know, that's beyond question, isn't it, ultimately? Uh, he's, he's certainly up there. Certainly up I there. Think, I think he is. I'm, I'm, I'm going to make a very bold life. I think he is. I just, he's so good. F absolutely phenomenal. Did it all. Never... Like play, like players. You know, you, you'll see players decline as their career starts to, to wind up. But he was just as good at the end of his career as he was at the start of it. Just as good, just as effective. Like read the game like nobody else. Didn't need to be lightning fast because he just knew exactly what was about to happen. And he was also very handsome, which helps tremendously. You know, just get lost yep. in those eyes. Yeah. Good oh, head of hair. Goodness. You know, it's important. Great head of hair on him. <laughs> Absolutely phenomenal head of hair on him. Oh, I hate him. Hate him. Tall, clever, hair. I'll take it all back. He's like my <laughs> least favorite person ever. Oh, it's the trifecta. Him. Just the absolute tall, honestly, clever and hair. It's all I look for in person. If I if I meet somebody who's who's tall and and, and has suit, I'm like, well, wow, you're, you're 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 my new hero. Um, just tell me what to do. I'm really annoyed Maldini's gone. I'm really Sorry annoyed. Sorry about that, Rich. Oh, it, it is what it is. Um, I'm going to consult the back of my envelope and just double check uh, who I... Mm, okay. All right. Um, well, because everybody's gone past, I feel like I'm going to have to do it as well. Um, I'm going to go for the player that I thought you were going to pick, Kev. Ooh, okay. And I'm going to have I'll, somebody... I'll to tell pick. you whether they're on my list or not. I'll be shocked if they're not. I'll be very, okay. very shocked if they're not. Um. Because I now need somebody to run my midfield, um, because Callum's taken Perlo, I'll take, you know, the best alternative to, uh, and that's going to be Zinedine Zidane. Yep, wasn't on my list. <laughs> really? <laughs> nope. Didn't have Zidane? Didn't nope. have Perlo, didn't have Zidane? No. Nope. Wow. Different Kevin type of me. midfield for me, you see, in this Very kind of environment. Can. Don't need a player that can spray the ball around. Everybody can do it. It's a short pitch. Need something else. See, I... No, see, I, I want, I want, I want Zinedine Zidane. I want somebody who can, you can pass, have shoot, <laughs> dribble, and just headbutt people. That's another metric that I, uh, I like to measure my players against: uh, ability to headbutt. So yeah, I'm going to take Zinedine Zidane, and he's just going to uh, just tap dance, um, literally, uh, in tap shoes, a la Michael Flatley uh, around the midfield, <laughs> and occasionally make passes. And I'm very, very excited. I give confusing instructions. I'm going to pretend it's the language barrier, but realistically, I just want to see him boogie. Uh, Callum, who would you like for pick number two, pal? Well, my players aren't going to be wearing tap shoes, so we're already going to beat Rich's team. So that's a good start. Um, I, I'm going to stick... <laughs> This might not be a predictable one, actually. I, I'm, I'm going to stick with the case of the Hansons because I feel like, ultimately, if, if we can't win on the pitch, at least if we go, oh, oh, have you seen that team? Woohoo! Um, and that is Olivier Giroud because I just feel like he would be hilarious um, <laughs> playing in a six-a-side because he, if you look at his goal reel, in, in 20 or 30 years' time, people will look at Oliver Giroud and think he was potentially the best player of all time. With some of the goals he scored, they are outrageous. And I think in a six-a-side format, he's big, he's tall. We don't necessarily need the aerial threat in six-a-side. You're not going to be whipping in many crosses, but he does have that ability with his feet. And I think Giroud, despite being incredibly handsome, is also an excellent footballer. So I'm going to go Olivier Giroud. Solid, very, very solid pick. I think in a six-a-side format as well, he's 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 capable of, of some absolutely outrageous things, isn't Olivier Giroud? And the fact that if, if you look at the fact that he's France's all-time top goal scorer as well, just 
is is nothing short of because some of the some of the striking talent that that France has had over over the especially the fact that he outscored Thierry Henry at international level is just mind boggling. I, I think he's really underrated in a real hmm. weird way. I think I think Giroud isn't rated as highly as he probably should be, especially like what he has done in football and who he's played for and stuff. He's genuinely had a really impressive career that's sort of hmm. in a weird way gone under the radar in some senses. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Absolutely. I think if he was, if he had like the pace of like an Henri mm -hmm. or an Mbappe, I think then he would have just been lauded as one of the best to ever have done it. But because he was bigger and a bit slower, I just think, like I said, I think that that's part of the reason. I think he just, I don't think he hit all the physical attributes that people look for when they look mm -hmm. at the best players in the world. But stunning. Absolutely <laughs> Isn't he? Oh God, he's handsome. Again, he's 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 tall. He's he's, he's tall. Got hair. Like, yep. I mean, <laughs> I'm fully fully invested in Olivier Giroud. That's a, that's a very very good second pick. I'll take. Yeah. Well, well done. Begrudgingly Thanks. good. Uh, Jeb, who's your second very very angry human being that you'd like to be on your six side team? Well, this guy does unbelievable things as well, and it's always always entertaining. It's Mario. It's Mario Balotelli. <laughs> yes. You want you want someone to spice it up. You want. I mean, even when they handed out bibs, he won't be able to put the bib on properly. It's exactly <laughs> who I want to go alongside Adriano up front with all the other four strikers that are picked as well. But yeah, Balotelli <laughs> is definitely the one for me. He's uh, yeah. I'm sure he won't have like a little petulant strop if the referee says something to him or anything like that, or he won't walk off. He'll just be nice and level down the line for the tackle. He can score a goal, though. He can score a goal. He might not assist. Famously, he had one assist in the Premier League. It was quite a big one. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah. But, you know, I, I think I think it will work quite nicely. And then, then afterwards, we can have a nice firework display where we've won it all. Or before. It, or in the changing rooms. Either one. It doesn't matter where. It's up to me. You know what? You can do what you want. During. Why not? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's... There you go. Just, just plant them in like Perlo's socks as he runs past him. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. See, just just little bangers in his yeah. socks, just like like the fuse, just like white. There you go. He's the Italian footballing wily coyote. That's what we've uh, essentially established here, isn't it? He's. I like Mario Balotelli. I, I I've got I've got a soft spot for Mario. He, he's still playing as well, isn't he? So yeah. he's he's a current player. Yeah, yeah he's he is, a current he's player. He's still kicking around as well. Yeah, I, I've, I've got a soft spot for Mario Balotelli. I think the fact that when you see typically very, very grumpy, especially as he's got older, Jose Mourinho, like when he start when he talks about former players, like there's that, that wonderful story when he was at Inter, and you know, he's, he's, yeah, everyone was injured. Like you know, he didn't have any strikers. Balotelli was the only fit striker that he had at the club, and then like he picked up a yellow card at like the 44th minute, and he said his half time team talk was like 15 minutes just sitting next to Mario Balotelli and going, Mario. Don't do anything stupid. Yeah. Don't do anything stupid. You're my only striker. Do not do anything stupid. Don't dive in for loose balls. Don't argue with the referee. Don't let people wind you. Just walk away from everything. Please, I need you to stay on the pitch. He's like 46th minute, first minute back off. Yellow card gets sent off straight away. <laughs> but Mario, he's like, he's like oh, 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 that's just Mario. Like, if that was anybody else, he'd be like, uh, that person, I've uh, I've just sent horses' heads to their families uh, every week since. It was 20 years ago, so I haven't forgiven him. And uh, I hope he gets injured tomorrow. Um, but he just had that little soft spot for Mario Balotelli. And you, kind of have, you have to love that about him. Uh, Kev. Mm. Go on, who else are you going to steal off my list? Well, uh, I'm probably not because what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my first midfielder in. And, and mm -hmm. whereas uh, you you guys have specifically gone for the likes of Zidane and Perlo, I feel we need a different type of player in there. A fantastic player nonetheless and a current player. And I'm going SMS. Sergei Milinkovic-Savic. Bit of a big bloke. There's a theme in my side. There's a bit of height and a bit of power in there. Got a fantastic engine to do some defensive work, but some offensive work as well. Links up the play. He can be a threat in both boxes that's necessary. And I think all round, he can be a bit of a brute in a side game. So I'm going for Sergei Malinkovic Savic. That's, that's a very solid midfield pick, I think, Kev. Um, yeah. You can't can't really fault him, can you? Did, did does everything really, really, really well. Um, 
it's the fact that you know if you start up a, an older FM save, if he's not playing for one of the world's biggest clubs within a couple of seasons, something's probably gone wrong with your save. Just turns up everywhere. Yep. It's so good, so so oh, good. Absolutely. Yeah, absolute unit. Yeah, I like Milinkovic Savic a lot, uh, and it wasn't on, didn't make my list, but I because I didn't think of him. If I'm completely honest with you, <laughs> but if I had thought of him, straight in there, um, I'm gonna again, I'm gonna follow suit. I'm gonna go for a current player, and I'm gonna finish my midfield because I'm gonna play a two-man midfield. And next to Zinedine Zidane, I want somebody who's gonna do the dirty work. I want somebody who's gonna be petulant all over the place with the ability to uh, you know because it's, it's a six a side pitch if you spot the keeper just off his line or just slightly out of position somebody you can just drill one from 20 odd yards and it's probably going to go in anyway a, a current footballer who i thought had retired until i checked about five minutes before we uh, we all met up to record this week's podcast still playing but is currently playing in indonesia Next to Zinedine, to Zinedine Zidane, I'm going to have Rajan Angolan. Very, very small, very, very angry, very, very Belgian. Um, he used to have like a really weird little bleach blonde mohawk, um, which mm. always looked really, really weird. And uh, I think the fa my favorite thing about his Wikipedia article is when you look him up and look at his career, it's got, yeah, yeah, turned up, played for Roma, did quite well, went on loan to some of the clubs, did quite well. Right down the bottom, it's like, yeah, massive controversies. Uh, he, he was a chain smoker. He smoked cigarettes. How dare he? And it made everyone really, really angry. Um, but I just really like the fact that I've got, you know, arguably the greatest French midfielder of all time. And then just a small, angry, chain smoking Belgian next to him. <laughs> I think that's that is that's that's classic six aside. That is that's that's Sunday league at its best. You know, you've got your pristine, like you know, role model footballer, and then just the small little angry hungover man, uh, smoking a rolly on the sidelines, ready to come on. So Nangolan is the one for me. Um, and I'm very happy with it. Good, good. Look at that midfield. Zidane, Nangolan, can't fault it. Callum, who have you got third, pal? I'm really confused by this game. Okay, so we are allowed to choose <laughs> yeah. any players any, yep. in the world, any players yep. who played in Italy for one season. That's a lot of players. And yep. Balotelli and Nyan Gollan have just been chosen. Now, SMS or Let's yep. Slide, I think he's quite good. But the Bang. other two, what is going on? I they mean, don't want to win. It's fine. They don't want to win. They've already <laughs> lost, Kev. It's me against you now. Balotelli totally. You want to treble with Inter. Yeah. No, rubbish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it was all on him. It was all on Balotelli. Was... That year, they all went, you know what? Without Mario, we never would have won this treble. Anyway, let's move on. Um, and to be clear, I've said all this, gearing myself up as if I've got a good pick. I'm not sure this is the best pick in the world, but it's quite an FMT pick, so I'm going to pick it. Um, now, there's been, a, there's been a rivalry raging on in FMT for a while, since we did that Chelsea save uh, between a certain Romelu Lukaku and Victor Osserman. Um, who are both players who've played in Italy and both eligible to be chosen. Now, being an Evertonian, I have a soft spot for Big Rom. And I also am left-footed and I used to play up front. So there's a link there. And, I've, you know, basically what I'm trying to say is I am very similar to Romelu Lukaku in a lot of ways. Um, I'm just not Belgian. I'm just not Belgian. So, you know, so basically the only way for me to get myself within this team, because I've never played a season in Italy, unfortunately, was to choose Romelu Lukaku. So I'm going for the two-pronged attack in a six-a-side team of two arguably strikers who don't work very hard, uh, but Oliver Giroud and Lukaku will be playing up front for me um, in my side. with Because Perlo, Perlo can do everything. That was my theory. That's why I had to choose Perlo. Perlo does everything, and those two are just going to stand there and put the ball in the back of the net. I think that's a terrible pick. <laughs> I think Ugh. it makes a lot of sense. Now, let's just move Ugh. on, shall we? Let's Free move one. on. <coughs> Free one. Wow. <laughs> Wow, yeah, I'm glad, glad Callum's back this week. God. Um, <laughs> ugh. Ugh. Well, good. Good. Wasted a pick. That's fair enough. Uh, Jeb, who's your third pick? Um, it can't be Lukaku. No, no, we, we probably need someone to be a calming influence on the team, don't we? Just to oh, dear. Because <laughs> we really need to just level everyone out. Be really nice. Uh, Antonio Cassano is my next pick. 
Antonio Cassano, who said to Luciano Spalletti, you're not coaching those useless players you had at Udinese. This isn't your house. This is my house. <laughs> uh, wow. He threw his shirt at a referee. He uh, punched his, uh, the lippy's son in a nightclub. Oh, just perf perfect. Quite a good striker, to be fair. He, did, he was really good, but he just honestly is... I forgot he played for Real Madrid. I completely forgot he had a season there. That went really well for him. Uh, I think he was under Capello, wasn't he? And he called Capello mm -hmm. a, a piece of S and uh, said he's more fake than Mon Monopoly money. But yeah, Cassano <laughs> to go alongside Balotelli and Adriano up front. Who, who's defending in your team? Well, You're supposed to make a six aside team. Why, why it's not choose all the strikers. <laughs> You've made a mockery here. of this, Jeb. You've made a mockery of it. You know you have. Oh, I'm, I'm trying to be funny. This is ridiculous, Jeb. Half four. Half four this morning, Jeb. I was making this team. Half four. What's the point? What's the point of all of this? Put me on your team. I'm angry as well. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I've, got, I've got three angry players. That this is how five-a-side works. Nobody wants to defend him five-a-side. <laughs> See what you've done, Rich. See what you've done. This is actually, oh. I, I needed this. Thank you. I, I don't have to, I, oh. Sometimes you just need to get angry, don't you? Oh, yeah. Sometimes you just need to get it out, Paul. Sometimes you just need to get it out. This yeah. is the okay. therapy side of the, the past. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, five aside, just gonna just 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 before um just Kev just before we take your third player, mate. Um, Callum. yes, mate. Is everything right at home, bud? I'm fine. It's just us now, mate. No, I'm all good. I'm all good. You know, just Jeb knows how to push my buttons. I think. I think <laughs> that's what. It, and it's been a while, so he's pushing them extra hard. <laughs> Can't wait for his fourth pick. Can't wait. I might walk out. I'm enjoying the full reversal of roles here because it used to be me annoyed with Callum. Now it's full circle. Uh, it's seasonal. It's a seasonal thing. By <laughs> autumn, Jeb, you'll be furious with him again. Uh, Kev, um, yes, who's your mate. third player? And, should, we, and... should we try and calm this down a little bit? Shall we? <laughs> we can try. Uh, so uh, most of my sort of modern day three... Are, mm -hmm. are players that I've experienced through one form or another on FM and, and achieved good stuff with as part of the reason that I've chosen them. Not just because I think IRL, they're pretty good players and can do, you know, lots of good things for me, but on FM. And anybody that knows me well enough will know one of the guys that I keep going back to on my drafting when given the opportunity is going to play up front for me, and that is Vlahovic. Because he fits into my big meaty men type of um, spine that I'm going for. We've got Paolo Maldini at the back, who was a decent size. We, we've got SMS in midfield that was a decent size and can get about. And Vlahovic up top is another big meaty bloke, but scores goals, can be a presence, can dominate all of these wussy players that Jeb has got that's not angry enough. And I reckon... He'll get me some goals in this particular team. So I'm going for Vlahovic. Can't fault it. Again, it's it's a very Kev pick, yep. shockingly. What are the yep. chances? Uh, quite high, <laughs> as it turns out. Um, he is, he you... is a major. He really is. He's a major. He really is. He's just a major. He's a major. <laughs> We've lost Kev. Saluting the major. Yeah. There you go. He's back. He's back. It's... <laughs> But he's gone quiet. Oh no, we've lost Kev's audio. Oh no, okay. it's back. Oh, yeah. oh, it's back. Don't oh, worry. Don't worry. We can't hear you, Kev. Oh, oh sorry, so that, sorry, that, that, pick, that pick is null and void. So Kev has a grayed out player up top. That's unfortunate. Fair. I can only apologise. Yeah, I, I was um, while you were talking about that, Kev. I was just checking what uh, Brexit Kev is in Italian, um, just because <laughs> you know that, that seems to be the uh, the philosophy here. Uh, ironically, it's Brexit Kev, but you just have to do that when you uh, when you say it. So, El yeah. Uh, Absolutely. That's fair. That's, that's that's fair. That's fair. Bring it um, on. Just 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 a bunch of large large gentlemen. Yes. The, uh, yeah. The the United City transfer and policy. There's still in action potentially. There's still potentially one or two more to come. I am shaken to my core. Uh, Danny <laughs> DeVito wasn't that tall. Just so you know, Kev. Um, 
I feel like I, I need to balance the equation now. Um, Go on. Because Callum has brought up the debate, hasn't he? He's brought it up. Oh, no, and... poor Rich. Have you had to go the other way because you couldn't get your first choice? Wow. <laughs> That's exactly what's had to happen, <laughs> yeah. I've got both of them, um, Zidane and Nangolan. I mean, but why, why, why? <laughs> Idiots for leaving Nangolan. Um, yeah, I, I, because he's better than Lukaku, I'm, I'm taking the boy Ocean Man up front. Oh he's just not though is he he's, like, just, he's, not. Ju he's just not no. it's just ridiculous <laughs> you you just said that and he's fell flat in the podcast we yeah. we, we did the thing you don't no. do on podcast dead no. air because we all disagreed no. even jeb who's fought his corner for ages couldn't say anything that loved him uh, definitely uh, wasn't uh, on they... my list just to spite you <laughs> <laughs> it's a powerful motivator isn't it it is a powerful motivator uh but i had to, i have on my list on my on my my meticulous notes that i've made um i've got two current players that i was going to put up front and ocean man is one of them so i'm very very happy that he's there delighted in fact some may say absolutely delighted so i'll take him because i don't care how many goals your fictional lukaku is going to score for you ocean man's going to score one more so it's just these are just facts right. these are just facts i mean they're Sorry. not are they that's it's fiction it's not real because you're no, predicting no, the future this is this is the, this is actually the only part of the podcast where it is completely real um i've done <laughs> I'm willing to Google and prove you wrong, but I'm not going to because I'm better than that. I'm going to move on and choose my next pick. For anyone who, <laughs> for anyone was who was uh, paying any attention, um, which I, I can um, I can imagine at this point is quite difficult to. I've chosen two strikers so far and a midfielder, and my intention is to pick two defenders now. Um, so oh. I'm def debating whether to go for my one who's retired or my new one, but I think my new one is less likely to get picked. I think so. I'm going to go for my retired one. Um, and he's only just retired. I actually had to Google it just before. I was like, oh, has he? And he retired last year. So I got away with that one. Um, and I'm following my theme of trying to get myself in this team. Now, I said before I used to play up front and I'm left-footed. I also used to play centre-half and I'm left-footed. Um, I'm, I'm not Italian um, and I'm not as big as this man. Um, however, uh, Chiellini was quite a good defender in his time. And I believe he will be integral to this side. Six aside, now, having having played a little bit of it, although it would seem you, you want these sort of rapid little players, having someone big at the back is horrible to play against. Like in Because the pitch is so much smaller. It sounds stupid, but if they stand in front of the goal, it's pretty difficult to get around them. Um, and Chiellini is one of the biggest. He's very big. Um, last time I checked, I think he's seven foot three. So uh, <laughs> is he, he is he is about as large. Um, don't check it um, as, as you can get. So, yeah, my next pick is uh, is Chiellini. And thank you for proving my point that bigger meaty men is going to be important in this one. I yeah. appreciate it. No problem. Mm -hmm. No problem. Yeah. He is on my list. So thank you for that, Callum. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, yeah. And I was also quite, I, I couldn't remember if he had retired or not. Cause I know Last he started, year, yeah. he started this season as in like, in terms of like European seasons at LAFC, mm -hmm. but he's retired now. So yeah. oh, I love Chiellini. So mm. good. So, so good. So, so good. You know, big meaty man. Absolutely. Absolutely big meaty man. I mean, there's a certain photo of Cristiano Ronaldo with the Chiellini in the background in the dressing rooms where that is uh, proven. My goodness gracious me. Um, you know, doesn't have a 20 tackling for no reason. And we'll leave it there. My goodness. He's very, very good at football. Very, very good at football. Terrifying as well. Absolutely terrifying. Uh, pro properly makes me nervous. Uh, and not just because of that picture. So, yeah, Keelene is a really, really good pick. Damn you, Callum. Um, Jeb, who's your next angry player that's definitely not going to set Callum off again? <laughs> uh, I'm debating. I'm going to between two, two South Americans here. That are currently playing, which is quite handy, but I think I'm going to stick with Gary Medell because he never got sent off in his career. Uh, <laughs> he's still playing at Vasco de Gama, in Czech. but yes, he got sent off 19 times, and uh, I think he has aggression 20. So yeah, that's pretty much where that one's going to go. He's going to just just sit just behind the front three of Balotelli, Cassano, and Adriano, and it sh should work quite well. I think. I think. Uh, 
Absolutely. I, I'm actually all right with that because he's not a striker. Yeah, at least at least you're playing the game now, Jeb. Well, I'm not really playing the game. He's just going to sit behind and just two-footed tackle anybody that goes past those strikers. Yeah. Mo- mostly his own players. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just just any anything that moves, anything that moves gets snapped by uh, by Gary yeah. Medell. Is that QPR legend Gary Medell? I think he did, did he... play for them, yeah. I think did he? he? Did. Yeah. He Inter, I think... I'm sure he turned. I'm sure he turned up there. That really. No, was... he went to Cardiff, didn't he? He was at. Cardiff. I was Cardiff. That was yeah. it. I oh, thought. Oh, I yeah. thought it was Cardiff. He had like a season at Cardiff. Pretty sure he got sent off twice or something along those lines as well. Mm. But yes, uh, yeah. Always, always loves a two footy tackle, Gary Medell. And understandably so. Understandably so. That yeah, makes sense. It. I'd say it's it's the perfect midfielder for what you're putting together, Jeb. So makes complete sense to me. Uh, Kev, yeah, come on, is man. Let's your do fourth this. player going to be very small by any chance? Uh, not especially so. That may okay. surprise you, uh, but but mm-hmm. big unit. Mm-hmm. Have they have a Rolls Royce though. You know, they always describe someone like Rio Ferdinand as that central defender who was really great at doing his job, but also is a bit of a Rolls Royce. And that's what we're going for slightly in this pick. It's one of my legends, and I'm going mm. central midfield with Frank Rijkaard. Big guy, defensively solid, but he's a bit of a Rolls Royce. Just gets about the place, sniffs out danger, sorts it all out. No dramas other than spitting at German players and other bits and pieces that, you mm. know, so he could have fitted in Jeb's side, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. But um, but yeah, that's who I'm going for. Frank Rijkaard, along with SMS and Vlahovic and Maldini. I think we've got size and we've got uh, a bit of finesse on the ball. It all works pretty well. And I think within the context of uh, AC Milan back in the day with the likes of Hullet and Van Basten, those three with Rijkaard were phenomenal players and really, really set the world alight at that point. And um, yeah, could have picked someone like Hullet as well. I was thinking about it, maybe. But I think Rijkaard with the balance of what I want will do a fantastic job for me. Defensively solid. There you go. There you go. I mean, yeah, make, it makes sense. It makes sense. The irony is, Kev, the mm. irony is your your, your description of Frank Reichard, um there, basically your your logic being, you know, you could have picked somebody like a rude Hullet, but you've gone mm-hmm. for Frank Reichard. Yep. My next pick, I was thinking I could have picked a Frank Reichard, but I've gone for a rude <laughs> Hullet. <laughs> Because I've gone for another large Dutch player um, who could do, realistically, he did a bit of everything during his career. He, he played at the back, you know. He, he was, mm-hmm. you know, he, you know, he played at centre back. He's played as a central midfielder. He's played like behind the striker, um, and did everything very, very well. So I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna see your right card. I'm gonna raise you a rude hullet, and that's going to be. My second legend. I think that's yeah, I've only got no, yeah, it's my second one. So I've got Zidane as well. But yeah, so he's gonna be my second one. And he's just gonna look, maybe he'll play behind Ocean Man, maybe he'll drop back and defend it. Six aside, he's going to need maybe. to do everything at some point. Maybe you know? he'll just manage the team instead of you. Maybe he'll manage the team instead of me. <laughs> you know, it's it's you know, no, no, I only I can manage this team because um very much like a suicide squad, I've, I've got a little thing in the back of uh, Rajan Angolan's neck. So if he gets a little bit too eggy, I just like flash the detonator to him and he just calms down and starts playing football again. And <laughs> nobody else is allowed to use it. So so that, that's that's how I keep my job. Um threatening, threatening and frightening players. Um no. interestingly enough, we're we're all with four players in each. We've got two to go and, and nobody's wild carded mm-hmm. yet. So yeah, that's how FMT Maybe. works as well. By the way, guys, just just help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is help, help yeah. us. Help. It's it's the thing in but the back they, of the they, neck. They it's can't a problem. be helped. They can't be helped. When I saw Jeb at Insomnia last week, and I gave him a little cuddle, I just gave gave a little tap. Just, just make sure it's still there. It's it's still there. It's still there. Don't tell them. Don't tell them. Um, it's just it's just a smarty that I've glued on the back of their neck, which I don't need to know. They don't need to know. Uh, Callum, I, I, who's I'd, your... have, I'd have known that. I can smell chocolate a mile away. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> but it's on the back of your neck Kev. you can never get to it so that's that's see i <laughs> thought this through uh callum player number five my friend who have you got 
He's muted. Himself. Well, I mean, he's he is too, muted. So uh, he, he great out player for Callum. Then great, great out, out player, player for Callum. Yep. yep. So as I was saying, um, I, <laughs> um, I'm I'm going to leave my wild card uh, pick to the end because I'd be foolish to. You know, if you pick him now, then my next player could go. No one is going to pick my wild card. I can guarantee you that. Um, so <clears throat> I'm going. I, I, what I've really liked is Kev has gone for a lot of players who are sort of like a background of FM around mm. it and i haven't mm. done that yet so this one is an fm background kind of player more based around drafting this is my last defender that i'm bringing in so my wild card is a goalkeeper um and my my last defender is someone who we have renamed on the playoffs um mm -hmm. as barry bastoni because I had a look, I'll be honest with you, Syria is not really my area of expertise. I don't watch a lot, an awful lot of Italian football. Um, so I, as I say, at 4.30 in the morning, had a good old Google about who's good. <laughs> Typed in, <laughs> good Italian defender. And Bastoni came up. And then I went off and I said, good Italian defender. And I looked at another article and Bastoni came up as well. And I thought, you know what? I know who he is. So my next pick is Smart. Barry Bastoni. Mm -hmm. nice that makes sense it makes sense yeah he's 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 big and he's very very good at football and i like it chiellini and bastoni it's as, a solid bat line a defensive pairing mm. i quite like it mm. two left-footed players though you've not really thought that through Colin. no i uh, literally Ooh. my entire team other than perlo is left-footed <laughs> my entire <laughs> oh. team and i've got no issue with because if it's right foot this is the thing and I stand up for left footers here. If that was, if it was the other way around, no one would say anything. If it was all right footers and one left footer, no one would go, oh, you got too many right foots in there, but suddenly it's left foot. You know, the best player of all time is left footed, Lionel Messi. So, you know. Barry Bannon. Wow. Yeah, you, yeah. You, you stand up for left footed players, but you don't stand up correctly, do you? Because if you're a right footed, you'd be doing it correctly. You, wow. You, you wow. 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 Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. 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 Come at me, left footers. You'll miss. Um, look, it's just, look, look, just, just, you know, an entirely left footed team, and you're expecting to win, Callum. That's the ball. It's the ball. Rich, ball Rich, you're remembering that I have seen you do a crossbar um, challenge, and you've just said to me, you, you come at me, left footers, you will miss. And I'll leave it there, Rich, unless you'd like me to, to post some incriminating videos. <laughs> All those videos. Look, if, 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 look if, if videos of me are being posted and it's me failing at a crossbar challenge, it's the least incriminating video that's out there. So it's all absolutely fine. Yeah. Post them. Yeah. I, yeah. Well, I, I was about to say I was the closest to me taking somebody out on the day, but that, that was no, Armstrong. You that was yeah. absolutely nope. Armstrong. <laughs> it was definitely Armstrong. Yeah, poor Stu. Definitely <laughs> Armstrong. Yeah. Yeah. Well, oh. good. Anyway, what, what excellent picks you've made there, Callum, and I appreciate you uh, as, as, as a podcast co-host and friend. Uh, Jeb, pick number five. Who are so you I'm, going for? I'm going for somebody based off FM, really good, ball-playing midfielder, could pass it around, quite elegant and stuff like that. I've not picked him for that at all. We, we need no. funding. We need we need funding for the team as well, just to pay mm -hmm. off all these players, to pay off all the expensive habits. Mm -hmm. You know, fireworks cost money and stuff like that. So, uh, Sandro Tonali is my next player because <laughs> he can put a bet on us to win. <laughs> wow! <laughs> oh, fantastic! Yeah, yeah, that make that makes complete sense. That makes wait, wait, allegedly. No, no, it's true. Uh, yeah. anyway. No, no. <laughs> Still say it, it was my favorite <clears throat> bit of news is just like that he was betting when he was at Newcastle as well. So like he's not learned his lesson in no. HA but <laughs> I'm not allowed to bet. Oh, okay, I'll just go on another site. I'll just bet on there. So, yeah. No, 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 you can't. No. Yeah, but I'll just go on another site. Yeah, it's fine. I'll just keep betting. Yes. Yeah. I mean gambling is yeah. an addiction, so help let's hope he is getting some help. But honestly, do your research, Newcastle. <laughs> do your research. <laughs> Just a very, a very, a very quick Google of the situation. Yeah. Probably could have, uh, probably could have solved that one for him. Um, but there we go. See, it makes sense. It makes sense to me. I, I think it fits in beautifully with the theme of your team, Jeb. So, yeah, but who's in well. defence? We don't need. I've, I've been over this. I don't need defence in five aside. <laughs> Not gonna bite. Doesn't, doesn't, doesn't need defence. <laughs> no, nope. doesn't need defence. <laughs> Not gonna bite. <laughs> I'm just going to wait in case he does bite. 
Yeah, he's over I'm, it. I'm very tempted. <laughs> he's so tempted. <laughs> Oh. It was, it was oh. going to be five aside until Osserman went because I was just going to leave Osserman on the bench. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get on. Yeah. You just got to watch this very, very short Romelu Lukaku goal compilation. Um, yeah. Just from the sidelines um, on 3G. Short! Uh, Lukaku has scored so many goals, <laughs> it sticks aside, Jeb! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh I good. We finally won the Lukaku or so. I'll see that. So that's what it oh, I, I can't believe it came to this. I can't believe it came to this. I'm furious. Uh, Kev, pick Go number on, five man. for you, please, sir. So I, I've been tempted at this point to choose my non footballer mm-hmm. um, because I feel like I really want them. Uh, but mm-hmm. I'm going to take a risk and not. Uh, okay. because I think I'll be okay. So my my last current player is is the difference maker in my side in the sense that we've got some big burly blokes all charging about the place being big and burly and all that kind of stuff. And mm-hmm. I wanted a little bit of flair and a little bit of mm-hmm. trickery in and around them. So I've gone to FM24 and I found my player and you know some of these attributes don't sound amazing but once you put them all together i think are pretty spectacular so we've got 14 crossing 19 dribbling 15 finishing 19 first touch 16 passing uh, 18 technique uh, 17 determination 19 flair 15 acceleration i want farat skellia because i think in and around all of these big guys that have got height and power and will dominate a lot of the ball uh, physically and not be able to be, you know, the ball won't be taken off of them. I think occasionally you just need that bloke who's going to run and take the ball and jink it around people and cause havoc and tie everybody up in knots. And I think in and amongst my team, Kvarat Skellia is going to do the job for me and I look forward to watching him play. I've I've got no idea why, but I I knew you were going to pick him. <laughs> I, I I just knew you were going to pick him, and I don't there know if it's because you can say his name well. I think that might be part of it, Kevin. You just want to show off. I mean, but it's I, it's I a good name, it. isn't it? It is. It's a really good name. Just, I don't know how to say it, but it's a good name. Spell it. Um, just, written... Again, it's that modern player that I've used a lot in drafts. I love the way that he plays. He can do a lot of very good things very, very well. And I think in and around some big meaty men, this guy is going to be the difference maker. And and I can yeah. say his name. <laughs> and you can say his name. Um, <laughs> I've, just written, I've just written Kvaradona because it's it's fundamentally the same thing, isn't it? Um, he's Yeah, he's good. Oh, he's good. And it's yeah, he offsets your team quite nicely, doesn't he? Because he's sports. Yes, he does. And... Quite good. Okay, yeah, that's, that's a good. That's a good pick. That's a good pick. I'll give you that. I'll, 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 I'll give you that. Thank you for giving me that. <laughs> You're very welcome. You're very welcome. Uh, I'm now annoyed because again, I was considering picking him. Um, that's why I've got Kvaradona written down because uh, it made sense to me. Um, okay. Well, that's that's changed my last pick because realistically speaking. I could get away with another attacking player and let Hullet just try and defend on his own, or I could go for another all-out defender and then wild card it for the goalkeeper, couldn't I? Um, I'm going to pick a defender. I'm going to do, I'm going to be I'm going to be try and be sensible, and I'm going to I'm going to pick a defender. And I was torn between three when I was thinking about modern day Serie A defenders. Uh, one of them was Barry Bastoni because it's Barry Bastoni, and he's quite good um and then i'm kind of torn between the other two uh who i've got i've got a soft spot for both of them uh, for different reasons mainly one because i think he's very very good one because i think he's underrated i'm gonna go for the underdog i'm gonna go for the underrated the more underrated of the two uh, my other center back in a six side game of football is going to be current Serie A defender chris smalling because i really like chris smalling I think Chris Smalling is good at football, and I'm not ashamed to say it. I think Chris Smalling has been very, very good since he went to Roma. And I think I'm going to pick Chris Smalling. It was either him or Fakayo Tomori, but I think Chris Smalling deserves my love and attention more. Are you, are so you, sh- are you, Smalling. are you sure it's Chris that you want and not his brother Mike, as Louis Van Gaal famously called him in a press conference once? 
I didn't I'm know Mike Smalling. Smalling. Was, I didn't know Mike Smalling was available. Oh, this changes <laughs> everything. Right, can we start again? Can we start the recording? I want Mike Smalling. Damn it! I want Chris Smalling. I think Chris Smalling's <laughs> really good. I, I really like Chris Smalling. But he's, you he's, do he's, a good he's, job of convincing yourself, though. It's a mad. Yeah, keep going. Much. Keep it's going. It's not a mad pick. It is. It's not a mad pick. It's not a mad pick. It's not a mad pick. I think Chris Smalling's dead good at football. And you I really literally like just said a defender is better than him. Tamori is better than him. You went, I was yeah, thinking he's not about it, and I went for the worst one. <laughs> yeah. I went for the underdog, Callum. I went for the um, the underdog story. I went this this scrappy team of 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 of, of, of rejects wins. I'd be like, yeah, this is for you, underdogs everywhere, and they're going to go, thanks, Rich, and I'm going to say, you know what? It's fine. You know, this is just what I do. It's just what I do. So you're welcome, <laughs> underdogs. And there'll be a parade. Chris, I won't be able to make it. Yeah, Chris Small is so good. He's only played seven games this season. <laughs> yeah. So good. He's only played seven games this season, but loads of games before that. And he was above average in most of them, probably. I just, I, at just, least he's a couple just, of them. It's all right. Just, just, I don't know what the agenda is against Chris Smalling and Rajan Angola on this podcast. I really don't. Good. And I don't. I, We'll get to the bottom of it one day. Okay, then. Good. <sighs> Good. <laughs> there. Yes, this, we, this, yes, we this time memed my team. You just picked them. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's the theme of my team. It's, it's a good team. It's a team of players. Go on then, Callum. Show, show, show me how to do a wild card pick then if you're so good at picking pretend. Yeah, football. I mean, this isn't the, this isn't the example, is it really? I mean, to go for the wild card. Right, so I've been watching a lot of children's films recently and uh, and uh, there's one particular film which I actually I haven't watched in a while and I really enjoyed. Um, and it, I'll, for, for context, my, my pick is an animal. Um, it is not a human being. I cleared it before the podcast and, and it was clear that it doesn't have to be a human being. It is very much a wild card. Now, I was thinking six aside goals, Jeb, six aside goals are small, small goals. They're not a full size goal because there's less, less pitch, there's less players. Uh, so it's a smaller goal. So I thought, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to choose something that is so large... <laughs> That you cannot actually score. It's it, just by physically sitting in front of the goal, it will block the entire goal. And so, for that reason, I have gone from uh, Manny the Mammoth from Ice Age uh, because I believe that having a mammoth in goal, and and that is a literal mammoth, not you know, I'm not I'm not being metaphorical here. Um, you won't be able to score because if he hits, sits in the space of the goal, you cannot score. So I'm keeping a clean sheet at the very least in every game. Anyway, move on. <laughs> no, no, no. Just the just 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 to just to you know summarize. The last hour has been Callum shouting at Jeb for for not taking this seriously <laughs> enough. But no, it's the wild I'm card a pick, in Rich. I'm it's putting a mammoth in goal. No. It's the wild card pick. Sure. Sure. All right, then. I'm going to have Cthulhu. There we go. Let's, let's just do that. Sure. All those tentacles moving. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's, no, what, what you do? Uh, score, excuse, pass, no. excuse me, Rich. Can I just read the rules? Yeah. Uh, one time, masked player. This can be anybody in capitals. Anybody. Doesn't have to be football related. Is Manny the Mammoth anybody? He's certainly somebody. Thank you, Kev. <laughs> I can make the compelling <laughs> argument there's anything, but yeah, so yeah, that's that's fine. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's 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 fine. Yeah, you know what? Man of the Mammoth, you're in. You're in. And and if he does get disqualified, it'll be John Ratzenberger that voiced him. Just looking at the uh, dictionary, uh, if you look up anybody, it's any person or people. Oh. Ah. I literally cleared it before the game. I literally I said does it have to be a human being? No. Probably actually, you know, in, in the preamble. Be, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Right, oh. right. <laughs> um, Rick, is is there okay. any way in which we can bribe you to accidentally put Sid the Sloth in that <laughs> spot instead? <laughs> bribe? As, as if I've not, as if I've not written that already. Just Imagine accidentally. Um, yeah, just, just very small, very small thing. Really small thing from Ice Age. That's what Callum's yeah. chosen. Callum's yeah. chosen goal. Really weird that. Yeah. Um, Jeb, who is your final wild card pick to complete your six aside team? 
it's a uh, WrestleMania weekend. I'm a big big fan of the wrestling. Mm-hmm. And uh, actually, this morning it's 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 emerged that something's going to be released on Wednesday, which I don't think we expected to get released. It's the the, the backstage footage of a certain incident at AEW All In. Yeah, CM Punk's my pick because he would he'd get on with all of them so well, and it would go <laughs> so great. And obviously, he's the best in the world as well. So you know, we've obviously. got everything, and he's going to play up front. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, those team bonding days are going to be something, aren't they? Yeah, so Wait, who's your goalkeeper? <laughs> you don't need it. I've been over this. It's about scoring goals. That's all. I've I got need. a mammoth thing goal. You're not going to score. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they're just going to kick the, the living mammoth out of him. That's basically oh, what it's going to be. It's going to be that way. And yeah. then. Uh, Tonali will bribe the ref of all the money that he's made from the betting, yeah. so it's just going to work really well. But CM Punk is my mm-hmm. pick. He's uh, agile. He might have a broken arm, but well, that's fine. He can just use the cast to beat people out of the way as well. And yeah, they'll all get on. And if, if they don't get on, we'll just beat everyone up. It's fine. It's all all yeah. works well. All, or he'll all just lovely, turn, lovely stuff. Or he'll just turn up as part of a different six-a-side team in a couple of weeks' time. And yeah, exactly. then just yeah. continue doing that forever cm punk or as he's known in a lot of circles the the common denominator um good 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 because it's everybody it's it's everybody else's fault and yeah makes makes complete sense and we've also learned on the podcast today how mammoths went extinct it was a jeb six aside team just kicking them (laughs) gary (laughs) medell two-footing manny the mammoth repeatedly um good good I, I, i don't need to research that i feel like that's that's accurate um Kev. Yes, mate. You, how you're, how you're, am I supposed to follow this, for goodness sake? <laughs> how can any of us, Kev? How can any of us? See, here's my problem, right? So I, I knew that my my um, my random wild card was going to be my goalkeeper, because apparently mm-hmm. we all need a goalkeeper. Um, and, I, and I'd got this spiel about this particular person being a large character that was going to be able to cover the net and not concede a goal in the bloody bar until Callum put a mammoth <laughs> in his goal. <laughs> so it doesn't quite have the same effect anymore. But what I will counter that with, uh, I will say he's Italian, so he's on mm-hmm. theme. Mm-hmm. He was a goalkeeper but not really the thing that he was known for. And he's a really big bloke. I'm putting Luciano Pavarotti in net because nobody's going to score past him. He was a goalkeeper (laughs) in his former youth days and he's Italian. Come on, that surely gives me the win over a mammoth. There you go. (laughs) Wouldn't wouldn't that just be a a coffin in there? Quite possibly, yeah, but half of really it big coffee, can't yeah. run anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, you know, I mean, if we're going down that wormhole, mammoths are extinct. So, uh, I, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know. we, we know because Gary Medell kicked them all to death. That's that's <laughs> what we That's oh, I like that. See, if, if it's if it's a live Pavarotti, he can sing the pre match theme as well, can't he? So, See, and he was a goalkeeper in his youth, and he was a goalkeeper, so, you know, it's good, it's good yeah. knowledge. It's great, great it's, knowledge. It's just great. not quite. He's not quite as big mm-hmm. as a mammoth, but he was trying. No, not, not, not he quite. He was trying. He was. He was. He was doing his best. He was absolutely doing his best. See, that, that's it. And you can guarantee, if you, if you were to ever sit down and watch, you know, you know, three tenors videotapes with your nan, like that all be. I mean, who that, hasn't? Pop, who hasn't? Who hasn't? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm referencing it because I genuinely. That's what I had to do when I was a kid <laughs> with my nan. Um. My actual nan, not Mike Minion. That's 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 different. Um, right. Yeah. 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 But like, yeah. If Pavarotti came up on screen, she'd go, "I'll tell you what. He could save a penalty in his day." And I was like, "Could he?" Yeah. That's... She never said that. She never said that. <laughs> Liked it if she did. I would have enjoyed it a lot more if she did. Um, okay, that makes sense. Come that on, makes then, Rich. sense. Finish right. It off, so mate. Who have you I got? have. I've got. I've got a thought process for my goalkeeper. Oh dear. I've got a thought process because obviously mine is going to be a goalkeeper as well because we, we were due Is it one. is it something weird like a beached Titanic boat or something? It's <laughs> Twenty million times bigger than a net or something? Uh, it's just it's just an existential crisis because oh, okay. we put it in front of the goal, everyone's just going to crumble when they get near it. Uh, no, so my choice of goalkeeper because let's think about this logically. The process of scoring a goal, you, the objective is try and kick a ball into a net and there's somebody standing in front of it who's trying to block that shot. So if you're one-on-one mm-hmm. with the goalkeeper, your objective is to you know kick the ball past the goalkeeper. True. I think the most effective way 
I think the most effective way of trying to stop that is not to have a goalkeeper that's going to be good at getting himself in the way of the ball, but by having a goalkeeper that you are objectively going to want to kick the ball at. Like the opportunity to kick a ball at this person is more exciting to you as a human being than it is trying to kick the ball around them. Okay. So my goalkeeper is going to be James Corden because I can't think of a person I would rather kick footballs at more than James Corden. Um, and I feel that a lot of people would, would agree with that. Gavin and Stacey wasn't very good. Sorry, James. Um, sorry, life out. Um, it's right better than what? the program. Um, yeah, Gavin, Gavin and Stacey wasn't very good. You're a terrible late night television host. And uh, carpool karaoke um, stunk. So there you go. There you go. Come at me, James. And what? Say uh, something. He, he, he might. You never know. He might. <laughs> He's, he's, he, if there's one thing he has on his, on his hands these days, it's time. Um, yeah, Soz James. So if if you're one on one with James Corden, you're going to want to kick a football at him rather than around him. So that's my that's my thought process. Wow. I think I've broke. I think we've broken Callum today. I uh, can't believe you've just said that. <laughs> Damn and Stacey it, wasn't good. What do you mean? We're, 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 we're glad that you agree, Callum. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> The only, the only I'll good. I'll see you thing in six ever... weeks. <laughs> <laughs> the only good thing I've ever seen James Corden be part of. Um, there was continue. a very, there was a short-lived. No, no, I, I'll die on this hill. There is was it, a short-lived. Is it, is it the Cats series. movie? <laughs> no, that was bad. That was bad. that was that was a terrible vehicle for Gordon. Uh, the Cats movie, terrible. Everyone involved. Uh, Idris Elba. What were you thinking, pal? Um, you could have done anything. There was a TV show called the, it was called The King is Dead or some variation of The Something is Dead. And it was Simon Bird from The Inbetweeners and it was Nick Mohammed, the comedian. And there was a third host who I can't remember. I feel awful about it, but it was just a very, very silly TV quiz. And they did around one of the, they had guest panelists on every week and James Corden was on it once. And they did a bit where the, the theme of it was that, 10 people in america every year are crushed to death by vending machines and they just got nick Mohammed, and they just like glued loads of packets of crisps to him and then just very very slowly lowered him down from the ceiling to simulate a falling vending machine where james gordon had to lie underneath him ask tri answer trivia questions and it was the most compelling two minutes of television i've ever watched and i are thought you, james gordon did brilliantly in it are you sure really, really that's not some form of fever dream <sighs> now i say it out loud i feel like it doesn't exist but if it doesn't exist, hey James, I've got something you can do. Uh, Nick Mohammed, and we can we can make this work. And I'm, he sung a little song as he lowered down from the ceiling, and I, oh, it was very good. I like James Corden in that. That was that was good. That was that was good. Uh, good. Right. I feel like I need to recap the teams. Uh, just again to try and get can, back can on the I, road. Before you do, can I just say to all of the viewers and the listeners out there, if you have been affected by anything during this podcast, <laughs> please feel free to call the free phone number and talk to somebody because <laughs> I think we need to. <laughs> yeah. We're just going to put a phone number at the bottom of the uh, at the bottom of the episode. Don't know who's it's going to be, but whoever James is Gordon's get phone call. James Corden, <laughs> James Corden's, yeah. <laughs> we'll put James Corden, James Corden's number up. And uh, it's going to be people. It's just going to be Callum calling and apologising. I'm really, James. I'm so sorry for what Rich said about Gavin and Stacey. I'm so sorry. I'm so it's sorry. Great show. It's a great it's show. Not. I'm, I'm going to IMDb. Right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. There we go. Because that's all how we knew this week's podcast record was going to end. It's like no. I'm going. Listen. Rotten Tomatoes think is actually quite a good show. Imagine, come on! What's the, what's the rating? Eight point two out of ten in your faces. That's a very good rating. That is a very good rating. Subjective, very, very subjective. subjective I mean, yeah. that is yeah. that is life. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is you is know, it now it, appropriate for me to say that I've watched about twenty minutes of it, didn't get on with it, I haven't watched any more of it after that? Yes, it is, Kev. It's, it's a very poignant time to bring that up. This is good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, technically, four four an aggregate. So uh, we we need to decide her at some point. Uh, no. So yeah, in look, Gavin and Stacey having what an eight point three is it on IMDb just shows that sometimes people make the wrong choices when they're voting for things, doesn't it? Which is what we want you as an audience to do now. Because if you're listening to this podcast, um, <laughs> why? There'll be, polls up. <laughs> there'll be polls up on Twitch and and on Twitter, not Twitch, um, on on Spotify. 
and that's on the one. Twitter. <laughs> that's definitely the one. Oh, I'm so tired. Can you tell? Um, there will be polls up, and we want you to vote for which of these uh, these wonderful six side teams that we've crafted this afternoon. Uh, you think are the best ones? Which one do you think is best? Do you think it's Callum's team, which comprises of Andrea Perlo, Olivier Giroud, Romelu Lukaku? Lukaku, yeah, Ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. Romelu Lukaku, uh, Giorgio Chiellini, uh, Barry Bastoni, and uh, I've just written Mammoth from Ice Age. <laughs> what a team! What a t- what a team! What a team! Uh, Jeb's uh, incredibly well balanced emotionally and physically squad of uh, Adriano Balotelli, Cassano, Gary Medel, Sandro Tonali, and CM Punk. Uh, yep. Kev's team of uh, small and physically unfit players yep. of Paolo Maldini, uh, Sergio Milinkovic Savic, um, Vlahovic, Rijkaard, uh, Luciano Pavarotti. And uh, Kovac Kakilia. How was that, by the way, the pronunciation wise? Getting there. Hey, I'll take that. I'll take it that. It wasn't oh, really, but was I, really you just bad. have to build him up, you know? <laughs> just build him up. It's fine. I feel like I did well. Um, <laughs> Good. <laughs> the Rich Owen story, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, that's that's the working title of the autobiography. Um, uh, or just, ava- just, just permanently available. Um, that's James Corden now. Uh, he's got nothing he's got nothing going on. Or my team, uh, apart from playing in goal for my sixth side team, of Zinedine Zidane, Rajan Angolan, uh, Victor Osimhen, Rude Hullet, uh, Chris Smalling, and James Corden. The choice is clear, yeah. isn't it? The choice very, is clear. very. Very, very clear. Um, <laughs> Kev's going to win because he always does. Good, good, good. There I don't go, have David. a mammoth in my goal, though. I mean, well, I, I, I sort of do. I, personally, I, think, I think it's me versus Kev, really. I think the poll doesn't need to include you or Chad Rich. I think it just, just, just have me and Kev in there. Wow. Well, wow. you know, we took it seriously, so yeah, that's fine. Did you? Did you yeah, really? Put, you put, put a mammoth, mammoth in goal. <laughs> yeah, but you've got to have a little bit of flair, Jeb, you know, yeah, yeah, not, not the it. entire team. You didn't even choose a goalkeeper. Oh, it's happened again. How is he going to wear the gloves, Callum? How is he going to wear the gloves? He doesn't need gloves, Rich. He's massive. <laughs> How's it, well, where are you going to get the Rich, shin pads from? Rich. You've got to wear shin pads in End the podcast, Rich. End the podcast. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> there we go right um yeah that very much feels like a well actually technically speaking it doesn't feel like a podcast that just feels like more of a a breakdown of sorts um but it was good though it was good we had it we had a good time um yeah I feel like that. See what happens when you get the four of us together, chat. Yeah. Is this what you really, I know. really want? Did I call them chat? I mean, viewers, <laughs> whatever. I don't know. I'm a streamer, it's what I do. <laughs> See, I'm all flustered. <laughs> oh, right. It, Thanks, Rich. chat. I'm going to end it now. Right. Stick with us. Right. Which podcast are we going to raid? Let's find out who's on, <laughs> shall we? Good. Um, before we go. Before we go, um, on the subject of streaming, um, because we all do it to varying standards, and that's just a dig at myself, you're brilliant. Uh, Callum, you do content based around Slough? Slot. 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 Yeah, slot. You're a slot streamer. Callum, if you're going to be doing some stream, your streaming slot this week, um, Spell S L O U G H though. It's it's pretty yeah. weird. It's it's a Scandinavian club, is my it understanding. Is. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, if you're gonna be doing some content this week, Callum, uh, where can the people find you doing it? Uh, you can find me over on Y Callum um on Twitch and Y Callum on YouTube as well. Tr- still trying my best to put stuff out on YouTube. Um the, the viewership does somewhat drop after a while in a series, it turns out. So if, if you fancy a new series on YouTube, go over and go over and watch Slough. But yeah, it's uh, it's it's very up and down. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, but yeah, hopefully see you if I am there. <laughs> Lovely. Um, there you go. That I think I think that's the new slogan for you. Um, why Callum trying his best? That's, yeah, that's pretty much. Yeah, that's that's all people can ask for. All people can ask for. Jeb, Morecambe, going home. That's 
these are just words that mean yeah, you are. your stream. It's just, words. I might stream it's just it words. It's just words at this point. Yeah. Why you say many word when few word do? Um, where can people find you more coming, Jeb? Uh, I don't know if you'll be able to find me more coming, but uh, anyway, uh, twitch.tv forward slash Jebaru when I do stream. Yeah, there. Good. Good. Um, Kev, Mr. Back to Back Promotion. Well, I mean, you know, that is a rumour that's going around, for goodness sake. Uh, because these guys are not particularly putting themselves up enough and, and you know, put enough oomph behind the selling of themselves. I'll go and say, check them all out. They're actually really good at streaming. They do enjoy it, really. Please go and have a good old laugh with them whenever they do stream. You can find me at the United City FM pretty much most weekday afternoons, 3 till 5 p.m. over on Twitch. And I actually really enjoy it and love it. And actually... Back to Mac, back blooming promotions. I'll tell you a little bit about that next week on the pod. Maybe we'll see. But yeah, come and join us. It'll be a lot of fun. Absolutely, it will. Absolutely. What about you, Rich, is. are we going to be doing anything retro based this week? Yep, yeah, I'll, I'll be wrapping up my first season of Retro Barcelona this week. Um, thanks, Mad Scientist. It's been really, really good fun. Uh, retro Barcelona, and then once that's finished, uh, back to what's the story for my glory? Because I've, I've I'm excited. I want to get back and finish the stories. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. Uh, Twitch.tv forward slash Rich Owens FM. That's where you can find me. Um, click on that and watch me. It's good. We have another time. good selling of yourself. Good. Well, I done. know. I know, right? It's honestly, if I would say, I would say of the four of us, I make the best retro database content on Twitch. And I'll say that I with my whole chest. I think that's fair. I think that's fair. Uh, there you go. So probably true. I mean, it, it would be unless I, uh, any of you also did it. Good. There we go. Happy days. Um, that that was a good podcast. I'm going to put it out there. I, I had a good time today. Uh, and lads, thank you all for joining me for that. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's been lovely. It, you know, it's it's nice that we, we all get to get together at the same time. It's nice. It's a nice feeling. It's a nice feeling. So I appreciate all of you. It's been lovely. Um, but that wraps up another episode of Football Manager Therapy. Quite astutely, I think. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much for watching. However you are consuming this podcast, we appreciate you enormously. And uh, we will see you next time. Take care. Love you lots. Bye-bye. <laughs>